former President Donald Trump, uh, according to TheHill.com, declining to take a position on a potential federal abortion ban. Now, what the president said was that he believes this is a state issue. Most of us agree with that. Uh, Was this the right thing to do? Now, the president, since his announcement yesterday, that he believes states should be talking about abortion and and any restrictions on abortions, he's gotten pushback from the right, the left, the center, all around. Everybody has their opinion on what should be done about abortion. TheHill.com wrote, Trump's lack of an explicit endorsement drew criticism from some on the right, including a prominent anti-abortion group, while Democrats said his position is unchanged and accused him of dodging the question. The video message shared early Monday morning on True Social the Hill writes, was Trump's attempt to clarify his views on abortion after months of wavering. The Hill goes on to say Trump has been flirting with endorsing a 15 or 16 year ban and has said for months that if elected, he would negotiate something that would make both sides happy. After the announcement, many people had their ideas on what Trump should do. South Carolina senior Senator Lindsey Graham who is a top Trump supporter. Uh, He has previously introduced a bill to ban abortion after 15 weeks at the federal level. Senator Graham said he disagrees with the former president and that he would continue to advocate for a federal limit on abortions after 15 weeks. In a statement, Senator Graham said, I respectfully disagree with President Trump's statement that abortion is a state's right issue. Trump hit back at Graham almost immediately yesterday, saying the senator was doing a, quote, a great disservice to the Republican Party and to our country. Trump continued, many good Republicans lost elections because of this issue, and people like Lindsey Graham that are unrelenting are handing Democrats their dream of the House, Senate, and perhaps even the presidency. On our guest line, Today, a man who has been in the battle of protecting life for years now, South Carolina Representative John McCravey. He represents the people of House District 13 in Greenwood, South Carolina, a longtime friend of mine, and I'm so happy to have you join me this morning. Good morning, Representative. How are you? Good morning, Joey. I'm great. It's good to hear from you. It's so good to, to, uh, to be with you again. It's kind of like... Uh, uh, you joined me many times when I was doing the morning answer on 94.5, the answer in upstate South Carolina. It's like getting the old band back together. So uh, appreciate you joining me this morning. Uh, Representative McCravey, you have been in the fight for years now. You led the effort in South Carolina to pass the fetal heartbeat bill. You had to do it a couple of times. The, the first bill, uh, you had some legal issues. You guys came back, and again, you led the effort to uh, to get it passed again before we get into this, first, just, just give our listeners a quick overview of what South Carolina's bill does. Well, Joey, our bill, which I hope is not our final bill, uh, right now bans uh, uh, abortion when the heartbeat is detected. So uh, we have what's known as the heartbeat bill in effect in South Carolina. And uh, most people say that's about six weeks when a heartbeat is detected. So we do protect babies up to that point. Uh, Certainly we have the Human Life Protection Act, which takes that protection back to conception. Uh, That bill has been passed by the House of Representatives. The Senate, of course, has not taken that up. We discovered that we have six senators in South Carolina who are Republicans, but they're not pro-life. So, so uh, this is something that I believe the elections will deal with, but we are fighting in the states. And I'll say this, President Trump, if he's giving a status statement of where we are today in the pro-life movement, I think he's absolutely correct. The battle is in the states. Uh, we, we've seen that, you know, this federal ban, while, while it may, may be something that Uh, Senator Graham wants and others, other pro-life people want, uh, the chances of it getting through Congress right now are almost nothing. So, so we've got to, we've got to change hearts and minds, but the battle is in the States. President Trump is correct. And I'll say this, 
there's never been a more pro-life president of the United States than, than Donald Trump. Uh, he is the reason Roe versus Wade was overturned by appointing uh, great justices who actually look at the Constitution when they when they're interpreting the Constitution, and they don't they they're not activists. Um, also, he's the first president to attend the uh, pro life march in Washington D.C. Um, he opposed the tax dollars being spent for abortion. And he actually uh, stopped the, the Clinton era uh, funding of overseas abortions. Our tax dollars were going to fund overseas abortions before he became president. So I trust uh, President Trump when it comes to this issue. He's proven himself. And I think that his statement was a statement of a fact of where we are today in this fight. I don't think that he is saying that he would never sign a federal ban if that came to his desk. I think he would advance the cause of life. So that's my personal opinion. But for campaign purposes, I think he he believes that it's best to point this out, that the battle is in the states. Yep. And, and there's a real contrast there. You know, the, the Democrats are, are wanting to uh, point the finger. Of course, their, their big thing, of course, is uh, that a, a woman should have a right to make her own choice. Uh, so you, as you pointed out, the president being the first to, to actually attend a pro-life rally. Uh, on the other hand, you have Vice President Kamala Harris representing the Biden administration, being the first sitting vice president to actually visit a Planned Parenthood clinic. That, that's a real contrast, isn't it? it? It certainly is, and that's very shameful. You know, that organization got caught selling body parts. They're all about money, uh, and they're all about profit. So so uh, at the expense of, of women and and the right to life of, of babies. So, so, yes, it's very shameful. Uh, the, the contrast couldn't be worse. I mean, the Democrats uh, have gone to the point of wanting abortion all the way up to the time they're born. And even, you know, we, we remember the Virginia Democrat governor who said, why not let them die after they're born? So so uh, it's, a, it's a stark contrast between Republicans and Democrats. Republicans are now the party of life. Uh, the Democrats are the party of death. Yep, yep. On our guest line today, South Carolina Representative John McCravey, who has been in the fight in my home state of South Carolina for many years now in the fight for life and was one of our uh, state representatives who was instrumental in getting the fetal heartbeat bill passed, not once, but twice. Talk, talk with us a minute about some of the, uh, the, the hurdles that you had to overcome when, uh, when the, the, you, you first passed the, the, the first version of the fetal heartbeat bill. It was challenged. The court sent it back to you guys. Uh, you had to redo it. Talk with us about some of those details and, and what, what uh, the court's objected to. Joey, when we passed this bill in the House uh, at the time in 2019, for the first time we passed the heartbeat bill before Roe versus Wade was overturned, they said it couldn't be done. And thanks to a group of dedicated legislators we call the Family Caucus, in South Carolina, we were able to carry this legislation forward. And uh, with the help of the Republican leadership in the House, we got the bill passed. Later, the bill was declared to be unconstitutional. Uh, we had a swing vote from a, a conservative justice, and he swung the wrong way. Uh, later, uh, we replaced a justice on the Supreme Court with a pro-life justice and we have moved forward since that bill has now been declared. We rewrote it. Uh, the bill has now been declared to be constitutional in our state. And uh, so that's what's in effect now. Uh, we also passed the Human Life Protection Act that will protect life back to conception. And that has gone to the Senate. And we're hoping that the Senate will, be, uh, will see fit to pass this this law, if not this term, the next year after the election. Yeah. So we've been fighting, and that, that's a summary of, of many years of work. Uh, uh, many people, the, the National Right to Life people helped us. 
the South Carolina Citizens for Life helped us. Uh, Janet Porter with the Heartbeat Bill helped us. And so we've had we've had support from all over the nation uh, in in this effort from the beginning. So Jay Seculo even helped us draft the initial bill. Uh, yeah. His his uh, actually uh, Walter Weber, uh, a man who works with uh, a good constitutional attorney who works with Jay Seculo. So this was a this was an effort of many many people, not just John McCravey. And I want to make that clear, but but as moderator of the Family Caucus, I'm very proud of what our legislators have done in this state and look forward to continuing success on the life front. Yeah, uh, and you're right. It did take the work of a lot of, of different uh, leaders in the legislature, but Representative John McCravey, you were the one leading them. You, you were at the forefront of that battle. I, I watched it firsthand. So uh, in our final minute or so together here, Representative John McCravey from South Carolina, talk with us about, of course, one of the arguments is uh, that this issue could potentially cost Republicans elections in November. What is your response to that? Well, I, I think that's a false narrative myself. Uh, we know that that conservatives stand for life. If you if you take the polls, you know it depends on the way the polls are written. You know a lot of if you ask the question, should there be no restrictions on abortion, you're going to get an overwhelming majority of people who say certainly there should be restrictions on abortion. We don't want to see abortion used as birth control. I think everybody agrees with that. Uh, even a non-Christian would agree that abortion should not be used as birth control. So, so I, I think that, that uh, we have a, you know, it's an old term. Uh, I remember we have a moral majority out there that I believe uh, supports life. And that is one of the first rights mentioned in our Constitution, the yeah. right to life. So uh, we, we, I think Americans generally support that. Yeah. Representative John McCravey, keep fighting the good fight, my friend. So good to, to talk with you again today. Hope you have a blessed day. Same, same to you, Joey. Thank you for what you do. We appreciate you getting out the, the word and the, the real news out there, along with Mike Gallagher and, and your crew. So thank you so much.